Hey there, good to see you. Today in this video, I will be reviewing Gigapixel 8, the very latest version of the image upscaling software made by Topaz Labs. This is software that has been around for a number of years now. Photographers have been using uh, Gigapixel for a while to upscale their smaller, lower resolution images to create uh, larger, higher resolution versions for the purposes of creating prints and other uh, use cases. It's also excellent for things like smartphone images and drones. And there are some really interesting new features in version eight, some new stuff that I think you're going to be interested in checking out. This video is not paid for, it's not sponsored. I paid for Gigapixel 8 with my own money. Topaz Labs has no involvement in this video at all. I have not been paid to make it. Everything you hear in this video is my honest and unbiased opinion, nothing more, uh, nothing less. So Gigapixel is a desktop application that is compatible with macOS and Windows. And you can absolutely use it as a standalone app. You just drag and drop your image files into it directly from your local hard drive, and you can process just one image or an entire folder full of images. But you can also use uh, Gigapixel as a plugin for Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom Classic. To upscale an image from Photoshop, you simply go to File, Automate, and here you will see an option for Gigapixel AI. From Lightroom Classic, you right-click on an image in your image catalog, go to Edit In, and then choose Gigapixel. Now, when you do this, you're going to get this modal window here because what Lightroom needs to do is create a rasterized copy of the raw file. It's going to create a TIFF, of the raw image. And then you have options here for things like color space, bit depth. So it's not possible to open a DNG from uh, Lightroom Classic in Gigapixel. It first has to be rasterized. And when you click edit, it's going to create a TIFF and then open that up. So the user interface of Gigapixel is, uh, is pretty straightforward, I think. I mean, we have a very large preview window here with controls here to view uh, before and after results using a swipe, or we could do a split screen kind of a thing. Underneath the preview, this is where the queue is, where you're able to you know, process just one image or multiple images. And then over here in the right column, this is where all the various tools and inputs are. Starting up here at the top with the upscale, uh, options. You can do a custom upscale if you know exactly you know what dimensions you want. You can either input them as uh, inches, or you can do pixels or centimeters, whatever it is that you're you know trying to accomplish. And then up here there are uh, just some quick presets for things like two times larger, four times, or even max. And then here you have pixel density. This is the DPI, and you can change this to something lower or higher, you know, based on your needs and what it is that you're doing. Generally speaking, 300 DPI is considered the standard for you know making prints when printing. So 300 is you know pretty much the number I always stick with. And then next we choose a model for upscaling our image. Now, this is a really important part of Gigapixel, and there are two options here uh, that are available. We have basic models and we have generative models. Basic models are like the tried and true options. I mean, these have been part of Gigapixel for a while, although Topaz does claim that they have been improving these basic models and that they're you know, better than ever in, uh, in version eight. I guess you could, you could call them like a little more traditional. I mean, these are the ones that will upscale the pixels in your image and will you know, work to improve things like detail and clarity and sharpness and noise, while the generative models are something else. I mean, these are, this is getting into the whole new world of AI that, that we're in now, hence the name, uh, they generate a new image. Effectively, what they do is take your source image, it learns from it, and then it creates something new. And the results can be nearly indistinguishable from your original. It could look you know, practically the same, or it could be you know, something else entirely. In my experience so far, and maybe this will improve in later versions of Gigapixel, but so far at least for me, um, you know, the generative models can do a better job of improving detail and sharpness and adding detail and reforming areas of the image in order to you know make them look better but it's also very unpredictable it's kind of hard to know what it's going to do because it is very processor intensive to use these generative models and as you can see on my local machine here it's going to take uh, approximately 10 minutes in order to uh, just provide me with a preview and this is part of the reason why uh, topaz with gigapixel 8 and actually let me cancel this here why uh, Topaz is rolling out a new option, cloud rendering. You will see it down here at the bottom next to e export image. I can click on this and I'll say, do you want to render one image in the cloud? You're about to spend uh, four credits in order to do this. 
So what Topaz has done here is build out a backend cloud-based infrastructure where you're able to offload your upscaling uh, tasks to their system, to their hardware, and they will process the image, they will render it, they will create an upscaled version and then send it back to you. Now that might sound like, uh, you know, that could sound like something that's going to take quite a long time because you have to upload and download and all that kind of stuff. But in practice, their hardware is much, much faster. Cloud rendering is not free. Well, it's free for a bit. Uh, when you buy Gigapixel, you get uh, 100 free credits that you can use to test out the service to see the difference. But then once you burn through those 100 credits, you have to buy more if you want to use cloud rendering again. And you can either you know do that by buying individual packs of credits. Uh, obviously, the more you buy, uh, the less they're going to cost. And you can also subscribe to cloud rendering for uh, even better rates. And as you can see on their website, it's not one credit per image. However many credits you use is dependent on uh, how intensive the job is. So, you know, the more extreme the upscaling is going to be will depend on how many credits you end up using. But again, you don't have to use the cloud rendering service if you don't want to. You can upscale your images using either the basic models or the generative models locally on your own desktop. Just be prepared for the fact that the generative models are very slow and can take a very long time. And here is an example image. I pulled this off of a website and this is like, painfully small. I mean, this you know, for some reason it's 600 DPI, but you know, the pixels, you know, 560 pixels wide. I mean, that is just really, really small. Here is the basic low res model in Gigapixel 8. And as you can see, I mean, it does do a pretty remarkable job with the image. Really, really nice. I mean, it cleaned up some of the noise. It's reshaping and reforming. Uh, the lines, the architectural lines. The next layer I have here is the Recover uh, Generative AI version. And this is what I find to be just so crazy about this. I mean, you know, pay attention to the typography up here and especially this restaurant sign here. Here's the original, and that is the AI generated version of it. I mean, just take a look at how it reformed all of these letters in the sign, it even added serifs. Uh, it even knew that there were serifs at the at the end of each letter there, and was able to to put them in. It's 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 really quite crazy to look at. And look at what it did with this restaurant sign. I mean, just look at how it was just a blurry mess before. I mean, I could see AI getting confused and thinking that these letters were part of the part of the railing here. But it figured out that it was a sign and it was able to redraw it. And yeah, there's some weird things like this E is kind of a little bit funky, but in general, it's pretty fantastic. Really not bad at all. And it was able to, you know, these, um, you know, these people here standing by the old Model T, not bad. <laughs> I mean, very quite usable. As for the redefine generative model, well, here is what it can do. <laughs> Completely different. I mean, it took my base image and then just, you know, just made something up uh, entirely from scratch. Man, it really went nuts on the train, didn't it? Um, you know, this is the kind of thing that could be dialed back. I mean, I could, you know, go in and tweak it, but that'll give you a sense for the differences between redefine and recover. Not something I see myself using anytime soon, but it is very interesting nonetheless. So the new generative models in Gigapixel 8, I think, are pretty fantastic when you have an image or a whole bunch of images for that matter that uh, that just have inherent problems, bad DNA, so to speak. Like they have, you know, poor detail, poor sharpness, poor clarity, they've got problems. And maybe they're even small and low resolution as well. In those situations, the new generative uh, models are fantastic. I mean, that is what they are designed to do. They are designed to reinvent your image and create a newer, better uh, image. As long as you're okay with, you know, introducing a little bit of fiction into your uh, <laughs> into your image, then those are the models that you would want to use. Well, what about other types of images? What about high quality digital images, like images captured using a like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, let's say over the past, you know, 
10, 15, 20 years. What about those types of images? If you are a photographer and you already have high resolution assets and you want to be creating larger prints, maybe you want to create a book. I mean, whatever it is you're trying to do, are these new generative models better? Are they worth using? Are they worth the time? Are they is, you know, are they worth upgrading for? For example, uh, and I'll put the original up here on screen. This is an image that I took in Venice, Italy a number of years ago using a Canon 5D DSLR. And what I decided to try doing was upscale that DSLR image to 60 inches by 40 inches. Like that's a pretty big print. I mean, that's like, you know, fifth, like five feet wide. And then I cropped out the middle of the image effectively just trimmed it so it would fit on 13 by 19 inch paper because this is the largest uh, size that I'm capable of, of printing here at home. So what you're seeing here is the 60 by 40 print at full resolution just trimmed so you're only looking at this one uh, portion of it. Hope that makes sense. And the results are practically the same. I mean, they're very, very similar to one another, except this one over here only took like a few minutes in order to generate locally on my um, M2 Ultra Mac Studio over there. Whereas this one, uh, this one was actually too large to generate through cloud rendering. They limit it to like 64 uh, megapixels, something like that. So it couldn't even render this. So I rendered this locally on my machine and it took hours. I just let it run overnight on my computer and by the next morning, it was finished. So it didn't crash or anything like that. It actually generated the photo, but it took a very, very long time. And the generative version is no better, you know, than the basic standard version. And actually, in some ways, I prefer the standard version because when you, you know, really stick your nose in here and you look at some of the details, some of these fine details in the architecture here, AI is like pattern based, like it, it has pattern recognition capabilities in it. And when it detects a pattern, it tries to conform everything to that pattern. It tries to, you know, reshape and reform um, details in order to fit that established pattern in order to, you know, make it make it look better and make it look more correct. So it did some really kind of odd things with, you know, some of these fine details in the architecture here, some of the archways and some of the windows, uh, like the railing on the outside of the, you know, basilica here and, and some of the other lines up in here and stuff. It tried to account for some of the imp just inherent imperfections that are in the architecture in this old historic architecture. It's worth pointing out. Like if you were standing there on the Academia Bridge in Venice looking at this uh, from afar, this image over here would be closer to reality. This one over here is actually more authentic uh, than this one over here. And I know personally that if I actually made a print of this at 60 by 40 and put it on a wall somewhere, this kind of stuff would start to bother me over, after a while because I would know that it's not, that it's been manipulated. And, you know, the average person may not notice, the average person, average person may not care, but I would definitely care. And so I would rather have the imperfections. I would rather be as true and as, and as uh, authentic to the original image as I possibly can and not you know, not be reinventing things just for the sake of, of reinventing them. And uh, by the way, um, a few months ago, I actually visited Venice. I traveled there and I did some photography there and I made a video about that experience. If that is something of interest to you, I tried to share some tips and recommendations for uh, for being there and for photographing it. And and uh, if you want to check that out, I'll put a link up here to it if you would like to, uh, to see that. Anyway, uh, what I did here was just, you know, upscale, you know, the image to 60 by 40 using Photoshop, using the automatic um, uh, sampling option in the image size tool. That's what uh, Adobe recommends using. And then I used the basic uh, standard model uh, for this one over here. And the difference is definitely noticeable. I mean, obviously it's noticeable, you know, right here, right in front of me, similar to looking at a, a monitor over there. But I can tell you absolutely that, you know, when looking at this, at a distance as well from a few feet away, I can absolutely tell that the image on the right has better detail, better clarity. Uh, it just looks like a more, like a better, more high resolution version of the image compared to the Photoshop version, which is just kind of muddled. It's contrasty. The lines around the dome up here are really blurry and kind of soft, and it's a lost a fair amount of detail. And, and, um, and yeah, I mean, you can just absolutely tell that it's um, it looks like a low res image that's been upscaled uh, too far that I made. I, I just pushed things a little too far, whereas this is perfectly usable. I'm trying to draw a clear distinction between the generative models and the basic models, because I would imagine there's probably going to be a fair amount of marketing, a fair amount of hype around 
you know, generative AI about, you know, better, you know, results when upscaling your images, all that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to draw a clear distinction here so that, you know, you, you kind of know what you're getting into when you're using the tool. No question about it. If you do not currently own Gigapixel, if you've never used it and you just want to upscale your images, whether they are low resolution scans, low resolution images or high quality images like this, whatever it is you're trying to do, if you're trying to make a bigger image from a small one, Gigapixel is still you know, best of class. It is still a fantastic application to use. I will stick to the basic standard model. I think it produces the best results and I would use the generative options for, you know, certain use cases for certain, you know, specific types of images. Um, but otherwise, the basic standard model is great and is definitely better than upscaling through Photoshop or, you know, other applications. So I'm obviously a fan of Gigapixel and uh, maybe you will be too after, uh, after giving it a try. So if you want to try it out with your own images, there is a link down below in the video description that you can use. You can download a free trial for Mac OS and Windows, process your images and um, upscale them and give it a try and see how well it works for you.